Hello, um, welcome to Studio Oriented. So we're going to um, just do, I'm just going to do a little short video on um, the, the uh, how I optimize my final caches for render or storage reasons, um, especially if they're not going to be contributing to the scene anymore in terms of like um, uh, as some kind of sources, these attributes are not needed. So I'm going to do a little bit of a comparison video and I'm just going to um, go step by step from, you know, no optimization to all the way down to the optimization. So this is my um, a, a scene that I end up collecting uh, the, the simulations. I do have some uh, droplets here um, coming from a, a flip sim. These are the, the remaining droplets out of after the meshing. I do have some um, simulations that are generated from the impacts. These are also flipped. So if we could just look down here, that's kind of like how it looks. And if you look from the, the camera view, that's what you're expecting. So these chunks to hit, so this is a different camera. This is for the, um, the quantum conflict that I've been working on for a really long time now, and I intend to finish it soon, I promise. Um, so now if we look at some parameters you're going to see how important it is to optimize your files um, for various reasons uh, the technique will work in most scenarios here but now for example if you go to a piece of frame which is like i think it's a piece of frame uh, these seems were generated with um, uh, wedges so that they don't talk to each other but you know because it's such a chaotic scene i think it's gonna be fine so now if you look at here and if you do a middle mouse, we're going to see this 158 million points here, okay? And there's all these other attributes that I use, age, ID, P scale. There's the wedge num. Um, then there's groups. And this is actually me being uh, working on a cleaned data, okay? So not necessarily uh, uh, for simulation, but there's some additional stuff here that I do not need for my um, rendering needs. Um, and there are some other ways we can keep uh, storage lower as well. So now if you look at this here, it's usually like, you know, when you come out from a pop net, I don't think I have an example here, but I think we could. So this is frame 1650, right? So if we go here, first frame, I'm just going to turn this on, maybe hit play a little bit. Okay, actually, I think this was cooked all the way here. Let's just let cook one frame. All right, so out of a, out of a, a, a normal... Um, default pop net that's what you get okay age air 23 attributes so scaling to 180 million points we're talking about massive disk sizes okay and just because it's cheap doesn't mean that we should because it's also impacts the the memory usage um so i'm like cleaning that up quite a lot and i'm running 11 wedges i'm not going to go in details of this here because the topic is about optimization so again Let's go into um, a crowded frame, 1680. Let it cook for a real quick. And it's also, as you can see, it's, it, I have a quite beefy system and it's taken a lot to read this in because it's also processing the wedges, you're creating unique IDs and so on and so forth. But essentially, it takes a lot of disk space, means also slow process, means slow uh, render or spin up times. So let's just wait for this to load in quick, real quick. And removing some cleanups so on so forth. Hurry up now. Uh, key key. All right. So middle mouse, 168 million points. So what I'm going to do is now I'm going to cache this row straight into this folder. And so this is me assuming I did some level of attribute cleanup, and that's all. So already a, a better, uh, at the better station straight out of um, a simulation. And that's like um, quite a big file, 2.9 gigabytes per frame. Now, one of the things that I do, and this depends on the situation, is in this case, if I go around like this, there's a lot of from the camera view, there's a lot of points that I'll never see per frame. So I don't want to get rid of them from the simulation. I want to get rid of them per frame if they're not contributing into the scene, okay? Which means shadow culling. 
So looking from the camera, remove everything that is not necessarily going to be seen from that very specific frame. So for that, I do get the camera position. So let me just move this here on this bottom corner. And this is the camera position. Uh, this is not check rate. Let's fix this. Get cam P. So I'm just transferring the camera P and then creating a, a camera check ray, check cam P, cam, cam vector, let's say. So what happens next is that you bring in the camera from the first input of the wrangle. I'm doing a little uh, subtraction and I'm by default calling everything is a, a hit ID is one. Okay. This is pop actually this is not a thing needed. Um, yeah, I think this is not needed, but maybe I'll use it somewhere else. So now what I have here is that each each particle knows the camera position, right? And now I do have a vector towards the camera. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna do a ray check against our collision object for each particle. And that's an expensive operation, it's 168 million points, but it's not that bad. And, and and the benefits we get in the end is pretty good. So let's do the ray check. Now we get a, um, but we don't want to transform the points. So I already turned off the transform points because I don't want the points to change places. I don't. I just want to check that check if using the hit direction, which is towards the camera, if if the particle will hit something, which means that it's if it hits something, it's not seeing the, it's not visible to the camera because it's behind some object. Now if there's a glass object, that would have been a different story, of course, but it's not. And I'm creating a group called Ray Hit Group if it's hit, right? And then I'm going to, so here, let's check again, 168 million point. And I'll say, hey, remove everything I don't see in this angle. And it looks like nothing has changed. But if I look here now, I'm 87 million points as opposed to 168 million points. So which means that the remainder is actually never seen by the camera. Okay. So if I look here, you're going to see this gap that is in the shadow area that has been actually called out. But if you look through the camera, it's fine. Um, now let's keep moving. So I'm going to cache this out now. So that was my first attempt of uh, uh, optimization. So that's what it's called. Uh, the, the, it's usually it's called object culling or uh, shadow culling, object shadow culling, whatever. So let's save this to disk. Now from 2.9 gigabytes per frame they're down to 2.3 gigabytes per frame all right so i'm gonna do some additional work now i'm gonna get rid of all the attributes that i don't need right so cleaning up the groups this should not make a big difference but generally speaking i need well i need p scale as well actually well actually if they're uniform we don't need p scale so let's leave that out if your points are not uniform, then you need per particle P scale. But if they're not uniform, you can tell renderer to say, hey, render all of these particles that you see here to a certain size, which we can achieve that by without storing the attribute because it has a big impact on the file size. But velocity is quite important, right? Because each particle has their individual motion, which means that they, they'll be motion blurred individually. So now I'm doing, okay, now I removed X amount of particle uh, ID, so I'm only keeping position and velocity. I'm going to save this to this disk. That should give us a big save now. We're down to 1.2 gigabyte per frame. And we can just send this to farm to render, and it will render fine, assuming particles has a constant size. But what if Actually, you know what? Let's do a little quick math here, a simple math here to show the correlation between the attribute amount and the file size. So my last file just has position and velocity. So I have six attributes stored. Okay. Now my file size is 1,200 gigabytes, megabytes. All right. If I divide this by six, I'm going to get 200 um megabytes per attribute now inside houdini we can process the i the particles and generate velocities using id and you can do this actually in a lot of software as well so you can do this in katana you can do this on the fly you can inject these values into the render based on whatever you're using 
might require a little bit shaded writing, but generally speaking, all you need in order to create an, a, 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 a speed attribute, a velocity vector attribute, is a reference point to another uh, uh, frame, which is the ID. So what if I only keep ID instead of vector? So instead of storing six attributes, I'm going to store four attributes. So let's cache this out. And now I'm down to 821 megabytes. And now if you look at our original uh, storage per attribute number and times four, give or take, because I need the, the, the fractions, and that kind of adds up, right? So now we're down to 800 megabytes. So now Houdini um, allows us to store points using VDBs as well. Um, so they're kind of like, it's going to, encapsulate certain particles within certain frame uh, certain certain range and kind of like compress the data accordingly it's a bit of a more efficient way of storing data very minimal um, depending on how you do it but it can have a big impact especially in scenes like this that you'll never be able to see the difference okay so you drop in um, convert to VDB points and now this comes in two settings several settings but um, for position, is the uh, the biggest uh, culprit here because now it's you know it we have four attributes 75 percent of them are position um, per axis so I want to compress that down to 16 bit okay so by default it's a 30 bit 32 bit uh, uh, data you could go up to 64 bit data in inside of Dina. that's gonna go like a crazy big file size anyway but again we're rendering the precision here is not observable by eye so we're fine to test out some things uh, you can specify certain other attributes to be compressed properly now so now i have uh, um, points that are houdini native and here i have vdbs okay i'm gonna cache this out as well and now there's a slight difference it's not that much though but it's still smaller however you can also store the position attribute as an 8-bit attribute and this is still okay, um, and, and you'll see that it visually you can't see the difference. So let's let's do an eight bit cache out as well. And now we're down to five hundred megabytes. So per frame, so this is like what three thousand megabytes, right? Divide by five hundred. So in this specific frame, we have a file size that is six times smaller. Now. There is one gotcha, of course. We're not storing any um, velocity, so how do we, how do we uh, restore the velocity in Houdini? But I guess if you're watching this tutorial, you probably are aware already how that works. However, the, the other gotcha is the um, there is no native way of rendering uh, VDB points yet, as I uh, as this version, I believe. I don't know if XPU is um, going to enable that, but I think that will be useful. Um, Right now, in order to render this most optimized version, you would need to um, drop in a VDB points node. Where are you? And you would have to, you would have had to extract these points. Okay. And um, you would need to then trail up this with you know, you collect that, and then you, you you would need to change it to compute velocity, and you need to turn on the match by attribute ID. Um, yet again, that versus that would produce the same thing. Um, well, I think I'm not even doing, actually, we could do probably one more thing, because I'm not sure if I'm doing that one. Yeah. And then the last thing we could possibly include is the frost and culling, but I did not edit here, so I bet it should. Uh, actually, no, not for this one because I want to. No, actually, yes, yeah, I would. I would. Um, obviously, here's the the other gotcha. So that you, this is what you need to decide on what you're doing. Like, if if you're an artist, that is, generally speaking, these effects sometimes work from different camera angles. Sometimes you need to adjust from different camera angles. But if for this specific case, that's going to give you a lot of saving in terms of disk space and spun up and memory usage. But you have to pick your poison. If you change the camera, that's not going to work because now this is a, the opposite angle. Um, 
but you do want to have the best looking images per shot so you'll probably sacrifice this level of uh, instead of using this like hey, I'm trying to reduce my uh, uh, particle size my, my disk uh, space by uh, optimization you could approach this as uh, I'm trying to put the most possible particles that I can render into a single frame to uh, or most possible detail into a single frame in order to uh, not to sacrifice from the quality anyhow um, yeah so that was a um, how long has it been 15 minutes that was a 15 minutes on how I do optimizations on storing particles and thank you for watching